You know how when you're doom scrolling and you see a post from someone on Facebook and you have to stop because you're compelled to call out bullshit? Well, I did the other day and turns out the person who posted this was just fishing for prospects on Facebook, which I kind of figured at the time. They're a coach. Uh, they run a similar business to us. They're, they run a mastermind for agencies. Anyway, this post said something like, uh, you know, oh, what's the most overwhelming thing that you're struggling with in your business right now? Are you like, you know, have a challenge with like what to do next and which fire to put out and which opportunity to explore? And for me, it's all about overwhelm and not knowing what I should do next, which is horse shit because this person has a very successful agency and runs a mastermind. And so I believe they were just trying to empathize with the audience to get people to put their hand up and say, I'm struggling with this. So they could then pick up the conversations in the DMs and try and sell them something. However, it did prompt me to think about the importance of having a plan. And I know this is an extremely boring video that not many people will watch, but I think if you do watch this, then you are doing the right research and consuming the right content because if you're feeling overwhelmed or a bit lost or you're not sure about what you should be doing on any given Tuesday afternoon at 2.30 p.m., am I working on the right thing at the right time? Is my team working on the right thing at the right time? The answer is, if it's not, and this is what I commented on this post, if it's not on the plan, then it doesn't get done right now. Like it's, which fire do I put out right now? Which opportunity do I explore? The ones that are on the plan. The ones that we have decided in advance that we are going to tackle this quarter. We are going to put out these fires this quarter and let the other ones burn. There will always be fires in the business that you need to let burn. In fact, there's a fabulous episode of the Masters of Scale podcast hosted by Reid Hoffman, one of the founders of PayPal and LinkedIn, and it's called Let the Fires Burn. You need Part of being a successful business owner is understanding which fires you should let burn at any given point in time. If there are fires that are constantly burning and you are drowning in opportunities, which by the way, if you live in 2023 and you have a business that's connected to the internet, then you are drowning in opportunity. The problem is not a lack of opportunity. The problem is how do we triage the opportunities in front of us to make sure that we're going after the right ones? And if these are the questions that we're faced with, the answer is to decide in advance which fires to put out and which opportunities to explore. Because then, on any given Tuesday afternoon, when something comes across your desk, it's very easy to triage that fire or that opportunity and say, no, not right now. Let's put that on the someday maybe list. Let's deal with that next quarter. Let's deal with that next year. Let's have a conversation with the team about that. Let's have a conversation with my coach about that. Is that something that I should pursue right now? Well, I decided at the start of July that I was going to tackle these three big things this quarter. And this opportunity that's come across my desk or this fire that's in front of me doesn't fit within what I've already decided in advance I'm going to tackle this quarter. So therefore, I'm going to ignore it. And most people don't have a plan because it's very boring to sit down and work out a plan in advance. There is a caveat. Some fires need to be put out immediately. Most don't. But some fires do need to be put out immediately. If you're working on a client project and something has gone sideways and the client is at risk, you're at risk of losing the client or the client is at risk of, you know, calling you out on social media for not doing the right job or you're having a compliance issue and you're at risk of a lawsuit, then please put those fires out immediately. But most fires you can let burn for a period of time. Because if you constantly react to what's in front of you here and you don't think three months or six months or a year or five years in advance, a couple of things will happen. One, you'll be left behind because you're not thinking about what's happening in terms of technology and the landscape and your competitors and the market and the industry because you're constantly just reacting to what's in front of your face. Another thing is you have no time to sit and think strategically about where you want to take the business and make those big generational decisions. Who's going to run the agency in 20 years time or 30 years time or 40 years time? What do we do with the agency at the end of the entrepreneur's 
working life where they don't want to run the business anymore. And I know that a lot of you watching this will think, well, you know, what are you talking about? I'm 32 years old. I don't need to worry about that because I'm immortal. And I'm here to tell you, you're not. I recently turned 50 and I have been thinking about the end of my entrepreneurial life for a while. It's not on the horizon. I have no intention of going anywhere just yet. But at some point, I'm either going to be too old, too unwell or too cranky to run this business anymore. So I need to think about the succession plan. And there it is again, the plan. Like, what is the plan? Who's going to run this business when I'm not around? I have a CEO who runs it now and Emily won't run the business forever. At some point, she won't want to run the business. So who takes over from from Emily? What happens with this business when I don't want it anymore? Do I hand it over to my kids? Do we sell it? Do we just maximize the profit and build wealth in other strategies and then just you know, shut this down at the end of its life. I'm thinking about those things. And what that means is that I I feel like for the most part, I'm working on the right thing at the right time. Now, I've always got questions around that. And I ask my team, hey, how could I be most helpful to you guys right now? And we have a conversation about what our objectives are, what our short-term and what our mid-term objectives are. And that's the guiding light through which we make decisions about what to work on. We don't just react to what's in front of us. I spent a long time just reacting to what was in front of me and chasing opportunities and following tactical advice without actually having a strategy and without having a plan. And so I want to talk about a couple of key documents that we have in our business that have really helped us dial this in. One is the flight plan, which we spoke about in a previous video. And I think we'll probably link to that somewhere up here so you can go check that out. And the flight plan is really a 90-day strategic document that helps you get really focused on what you should be working on in the next 90 days. Uh, Having a revenue growth plan is also really important. And I think we also touched on that in that video. We might do a deep dive on that in in another video. The revenue growth plan is how do we plan on growing revenue over the next 12 months to three years? If you don't have a plan to grow revenue, chances are it won't grow. And if it does, it'll be accidental and you won't be able to replicate it. So you need to have a plan to grow revenue. I was on a podcast earlier this morning and my podcast guest said, you're either green and growing or ripe and rotting. And if you don't have a plan to grow, then chances are you're just going to rot on the vine. Growth doesn't happen accidentally. So having a revenue growth plan, which is a fancy Google sheet, having a flight plan, which is a 90 day strategic document that helps you and your team stay focused on what you should be working on. Having job scorecards for each role in the business and those job scorecards determine outcomes and numbers that people are responsible for. And those numbers and those outcomes should be in direct alignment with the 90 day flight plan. And that 90 day flight plan should be in direct alignment with the revenue growth plan. So these documents and this intellectual property and these frameworks work together and there's an interplay between these ideas that help every team member stay focused on the right thing at the right time. Now, as I said, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. People are still going to get distracted. People are still going to go after opportunities that they shouldn't. People are still going to get distracted and put out fires because they want to be useful and they think that that's the helpful thing to do. But if you're ever feeling like you're not spending your time in the best way or you're not being the most valuable or the most helpful to the company, then these documents help you make that decision in advance. And the beautiful thing about making the decision in advance is that it removes the pressure. You make the decision once, every three months. So therefore you don't need to make the decision every day. It's exhausting. There is the known thing, decision fatigue. It's exhausting making decisions every day. You get to the end of the day and your partner says, what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, I don't care, just throw food at me. I can't make any more decisions. I'm cooked because I've been making decisions all day long. And this is one of the challenges of being what's called a knowledge worker. We work with knowledge. We're not building physical things. You and I, if you're watching this video, you're probably not in the physical product business. Uh, We work with our knowledge and it's exhausting because we get to the end of the day and we've made so many decisions that we're tapped out. So let's make some of these big decisions in advance every three months, make the decision once, and then you don't have to worry about it for three months. And then at the end of that three months, you think about what's happening in the next three months. And again, you make the decision once per quarter, and then you spend the rest of the quarter executing tactics to fulfill on that strategy in order to achieve the goals that are on your revenue growth plan. I hope that's helpful. Just be careful of people posting on Facebook trying to empathize with you because they're probably just trying to get you into the DMs to sell your shit. That's just kind of the way it works. It's unfortunately the way it is. And make decisions in advance so you don't 
end up with decision fatigue by having to make those decisions every day. Uh, again, there should be some links around here to watch uh, other videos that we've talked about here. The revenue growth plan, the flight plan, and job scorecards are really the three key documents that you need to have set up in your business. If you want an insight into job scorecards, check out a fabulous book called Who by Jeff Smart, G-E-O-F-F Smart. His dad, I think it was Brad Smart, wrote a great book called Top Grading, all about finding hiring, recruiting, and keeping great talent. Job scorecards are a big part of their framework. So check out the book Who by Jeff Smart. It's a fabulous read. Hey, if you like this video, even if you don't, click the thumb that does that. Click the bell, subscribe, like it, share it with someone you think that might be able to benefit from it. I'm Troy Dean. And remember, as you get older, you grow hair in places you didn't know existed.